so where we left off last week last week we did a bunch of these stick figures and such if you remember sign of life drawing a line drawing um, right figuring things out playing off um, so I use that and I riffed off of that to there we go so I've got an oracle old considered a white shadow for an archetype talking about a lot of things and playing on this so this is where I left off so this week what what I want to do how I want to start off here is I want to just talk about simple shape construction so uh, the idea <coughs> being um, as an example just a standard uh, head right so we've already starting with a circle and then if you really look at it we've got kind of like this tilted in square and then a triangle at the bottom so um, if, if everything you do works around a simpler shape um, composition to create a stronger design it in turn uh, will be a much more of a successful design so that's the idea um, it goes a lot further of course because wherever you decide to place the eyes by the way where I'm placing the eyes is you know let's let's put it this way there we have a chin there we have the meat that goes up to the lip to where the mouth is going to go so the mouth would be here somewhere then we need upper lip and this is where the base of the nose would be um, and then anywhere from there we can decide to put the eyes so if we put the eyes higher up we give a longer nose if we put the eyes a little lower we we end up giving a shorter shorter nose and a larger head forehead area right so as an example simple shape here my simple shape here is this mono brow for where the brow is going to go okay and then there's another level for my simple shape i've created this this triangle and then another triangle going the other way so what that does is that just ensures that i have um, these simple shapes that are that are guiding where everything is going to go so if i go to this middle part here and i take this down i'm pretty much saying my mouth is there if that's going to be the width of my nose okay so again i am creating all these interesting shapes okay so from there all those simple shapes let's go in and get in the nose throw in some where the nostrils are going to be remember so if i'm doing this that means my nostrils come out to there so that they're all playing upon these shapes now the philtrum is a great way to guide to create another simple shape right so we got a triangle and a, and a rectangle there and then triangle to triangle for for the upper um upper lip and then of course we go and do the lower lip the actual flesh part and if we want we can actually have the the meat part of that lower lip which usually intersects with the chin okay if this person's smiling we pull say a grin we pull it wide and curl it at the end and then that curves that shape out right so it's this shape being pulled outwards more okay from there I can put in the eyes I can make large eyes small eyes I don't want the eyes to get too close to the um, to the bridge of the nose um, just because of, of structure bone structure right of the skull okay uh, I can go heavy with um, the um, the skin over the eye or not that's up to me I can have the actual brow tuck under like the eyebrow the hair of the eyebrow tuck under the actual brow of, of the person or not um, wherever these eyes point needs to match so if I'm gonna be tilt tilting the eye in I want to make sure they both tilt and aim for the same spot okay so of course we all know that there's these are circles as well okay and then it's just flesh that's going on top of them so as you can see there is a lot riding on that whole concept of these of these shapes okay uh, and there's a lot we can do with it and there's a lot we can play what if we want what if we want a more narrow um, narrow eye or narrow mouth what if we want to play upon certain things like this we can also play upon this concept here where we can have triangles going to the nose so we're not we're not concerned so much about our proportions one way we're just concerned that wherever the nose goes to and bases to 
it plays upon another another uh, a simple shape and a simple shape arrangement. So, um, in a nutshell, this is this is uh, how I'm playing upon this uh, this idea. So there's another triangle, right? These these simple shape arrangements work for just about every part of the of the um, of in this case of the human, but of, of a lot of your design about whatever you're designing. Uh, you design them out of shape, simple shapes so that you get a, 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 a stronger rhythm or feel and then you take it from there. So the whole idea for me to bring up the simple shapes here is if we go back to where I was doing uh, this character I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna riff off of this character and take it to the next level right so I think I have it on this layer we'll find out soon enough I'm gonna copy it and go back over to here and I'm gonna paste and good so there it is right so that's my stick figure. I'm going to just drop my stick figure down here. Uh, let's see. Good. And now that it's down there, I'm just going to lower its opacity. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer still. Come on, there we go. I'm going to lower its opacity. So that way it's not so distracting as I continue my work, right? So I'm thinking about this, um, and I'm finding now that there's a bit of a, a lithness, um, a grace that I don't know if I want him to have such a grace with. Okay, so um, I kind of like the hunching forward, if uh, you remember the last video. I really like that. I like the concept that the character is hunching forward a bit, right? Uh, droop shoulders, um, the hip base is the same, the knees bent, trying to hold on to, um, to, to its weight, to the character's weight. And so I'm still going to probably do this, but if you notice again, look how much closer. If I go straight down, all and including the, the, um, the bump, the leg would be straight down there. So if I rotate over to here, that's where that goes now. So now that I have that as my, as my bearing, I can go in and just literally do this. And I'm going to tuck it in a bit because I also want to bend, bend that, that leg also. So I kind of like that one a bit more. Okay, and now I can play upon it. This was graceful. What if I find the middle part and do this? So now it's more of a dragging of the foot, if you see that, right? Um, as opposed to that, that, con that graceful concept. I'm going to go double bump there so we get the feel. And I'm really starting to like what I'm seeing now. I'm feeling that this is a little better. It's showing that he is belaying his age. We're, we, we don't... We don't get a strong idea that he's probably in his 60s or 70s, right? Um, he's probably like a, a very uh, healthy 70-year-old that seems more like a, say, a 50-year-old or maybe even a late 40-year-old, right? Who knows? Maybe through magic uh, or some kind of power like that, he's actually managed to um, to kind of like give himself a bit of longevity, right? That's something that we can definitely explore in the story. As we're going along, I mean, again, this is going to be this is going to be my key um, antagonist, by the way, this white shadow. But I'm really trying to pull away from good and evil, right? I'm more about I'm more about competitor, like a competitor. The antagonist is the one that'll be the main competition, the main challenger for what this story is about, what they're going for, okay? So um, as, as, as we move along, right, I, I want not only um, my viewers to, to come along with me on, on the ride of, of how I'm actually designing and uh, smithing together this story, this visual story, I, I also, I, I, um, I want I want them to uh, uh, to be to have the reveal of these characters as they develop. I, I want them to be a part of it. So this is happening as well as I'm going to be creating um, an actual story, an actual visual story. It'll be in black and white, but the idea is that it will it will hopefully have audio, voice actors, uh, music, and and be in in like a real form, right? And the whole idea of a like a real is it's like an animatic this is this is going way back 
uh, with traditional 2D animation of, of how stories be told. But now it's being used in, like, if you go watch the, if you get the DVD for The Incredibles, um, it comes with um, deleted scenes. Well, a lot of those are in animatic form, like a real form. Uh, and, and it really belays a strong feeling of story. So this is, this is kind of the way this project is going to go. Okay, so I'm happy. I'm happy with what where I am with my stick figure of my character. So uh, there may be some modifications as I go along, playing with certain parts of it, um, just to, to just to ensure that um, I um, I keep the effect that I'm going for and hopefully the sophistication. So I'm just going to lighten this drawing up here a little. Also, uh, I'm going to get rid of that one that was underneath. Uh, and now I'm going to blank that one out as well and just add another layer. And this is a layer where I'm going to start talking and exploring my basic shapes. Um, so we have those basic shape ideas that I had shown you from the face. Uh, they work for just about everything. So we'll start with the head. And if you notice, I, I pretty much always do do my basic shape. So there's, there's my, my circle. Um, this one's getting a little bit more sophisticated. I want to give them kind of like a jutting out chin. Okay. So there's a bit of this flow happening. So I'll probably want to pull the head back to feel that flow. Okay, so that might be in his hairstyle, maybe a certain kind of hat he wears. It's uh, playing on a lot. Remember, he's a white shadow. He's an oracle because I'm not playing on good and evil. He's not going to be evil, right? He's He, um, he may be quite uh, benign or quite just your standard human, that has their uh, their advantages and their flaws, but this is definitely someone that truly does mean well, right? And not just mean well for themselves, obviously. So I'm just going to trace to the back. This is where the neck is. So I want to make sure I get that neck right. You see that? So I can go and get rid of that stuff. So I'm in my my simple shapes construction now. You can see how that neck actually jut forward a bit. So from there, from the spine, we we get the rib cage. And if you can see what's happening with the rib cage, there it is. Here's the front of it. Um, the solar plexus sternum area so I can go in now and put in a nice egg-shaped rib cage okay so there's my egg-shaped rib cage right so now I can feel where the front is uh, he is in his he's in his 60s but it's like he's in his late 40s uh, early 50s so I don't want to make him too impressive with his stance uh, the stick figure help with that a bit but we're gonna continue with that and just you know Make sure that he's not looking like he's um, a weight trainer or, or you know, a, a superhero, right? Because that is something he definitely isn't, okay? So we play on all that. We come to here. We have the hips now. I'm going to bring the hips forward a little. going to go to the, the secondary socket. I'm going to give him, um, I like to call it like for simple shape construct construction, especially. I like to call it like, you know, the shape of like um, underwear or briefs. Because right away you have the holes and, and the circles that help with the direction of, of legs and everything, right? Uh, and, and how the legs um, come out. So there's the body. I'm going to pull the hip out a little wider on that side. And we're good on that side. I'm going to make sure that this, right, is playing upon a kind of a, a bit of a belly, right? Going forward and dropping down like that. So that becomes the center of him. Uh, I'm going to have the, the shoulders relax, meaning they're drooping forward. So when I come to this side where the rib cage is, I'm going to droop the shoulder forward a bit more like this. So now that arm ends up being here. And then there's my shapes, right? My nice circle for the shoulder, circle for the shoulder. Um, going with a, like a tube for the upper arm and then a tube for the lower arm. So if you notice, his arm's coming forward and now my arm is going away from me. So I, with the tubes, I'm able to gauge and understand uh, what's actually happening with my forms in the direction they're all moving in, right? Um, so I can't remember what, was I, did he have a, he had a scroll in his hand. So he's not one to walk around with, you know, the stereotypical wizard staff, right? So there's the length of my arm, right? So I wanna make sure that I maintain that same length, right? So let's just get that up a little higher here. There we go. It's the open wrist, we're aware of that, right? That if we have a, our forearm kind of coming towards us here, um, there's, a, there's a definite um, long and short side to it, right? 
So basically, our hand, right? So let me just throw my hand in here real quick. There we go. Just so you get an idea of what's happening, right? Bit of a long thumb. Let me just pull that back a bit. Right? So see how that wrist is? So if we see if we see a, an arm from the side, we see this thinner quality in the wrist because of the angle in which we are looking at this in. Right? So you see how thin the wrist is there and then how much thicker the wrist will get once we see it from a from a flat view. Oops. Easy there. There we go. Alright, so that's that's just things to be aware of. So this is like the Y there and the way the hand is and that's going cross we're kind of going thinner with the wrist right we're bringing our, our thumb holding on to that scroll right so it's the thumb is just reaching around and using um, friction it's not actually going to pry itself under pry itself leverage the thumb will not get leverage underneath this scroll case okay uh, and then we'll see a bit of the back of the hand coming forward we know that our, our pretty much where our knuckle of our thumb is is where our fingers start. The idea would be that now those would probably just get a little bit of leverage underneath um, and telegraph around like that. So then we can go in and we can do this. All right, we'll see a bit of a finger there, a bit of a finger there, and one there. We probably won't see any the other ones. So now it's the same idea. All right? It's on an angle, so let's make sure my ellipse on an equal angle okay um, he's established established um, as as a um, as that white shadow is that archetype of that uh, the um, the the Oracle right he used to be part of this the school the the, um, the the college of the oracles um, the order right now if the, yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, I'll verbally say it and later on I'll be starting to write some of this stuff down. Um, I think it's the calcanate or the calcanium. It's something of that nature. So um, he used to be. He, ha he has stepped down um, to basically um, allow new vision, uh, a new direction for the calcanate, the calcanium. And um, it's this uh, very gifted female um, health and seer. Um, so there's going to be other things that are going to be being presented. Um, so he has been, he has, it's almost like he's been supplanted, right? He's been replaced uh, by this other gifted individual who, who was um, fate touched, uh, touched by, by elves um, in this, in this um, mythos of this world and of this story. Um, uh, the origin of elves are like the the uh, the four spirits and the brownies that we're aware of, and uh, and and the, the, there is a, there's quite a bit of mischief to what they do, and something that many of them love to do is um, go and uh, affect and touch the um, the uh, suspecting mothers of a baby, human a human mother. And, and in doing so, uh, what ends up happening is their, their, their children have special talents, gifts, gifts from the Fae, from, from the elves, right? Um, and so it would seem that this is what has happened, um, that this, uh, uh, this individual that is now um, running the Calcanium is um, actually uh, the uh, leader of the Cal Cal Let me say that again. The person that is actually running the the Calcanium or the Calcanate um, is uh, is um, half elf or Helfen, um, and she she is gifted. She's gifted with with um, with sight, with dreams and such. Um, like many oracles are, but of course she's she's uh, she's having it to uh, a greater level, and in her case, her level has brought her to a point where she um, she constantly has these these dreams, these foreshadows, these prophecies 
um, um, a lot of it around this um, August Vault of the Ancients that's being discovered, uncovered, and explored in these new lands. Okay, so I'll just finish off. Don't want to give him super thick legs. He's definitely more of a sedentary. See my knee? Um, I'm going to see where my Achilles tendon would come out, and that will basically say where my heel is going to be. And of course, we have to go in, give it a bit of a thickness, thickness, um, instep. So there's a bit of meat there from people that do a study anatomy. You'll, you'll understand what, what's going on there with the bone. Um, and then the foot's coming forward. I'm going to have them in some kind of footwear. I don't know what yet, so I just want a little bit of an upturn of the foot at the end. And then we go the other way. So take a look here. There's my size, right? So there's my size. And then I come here, and that size goes there. So that's where my knee is going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I get my knee to there. And then there's the, the bend of the knee and the, this leg. If you notice, I'm using coiling, um, contouring out to understand what's going on from that point, right? So knee to heel, knee to heel. That's where my heel is going to be. So I can go and now bring this down. And there's the foot, there's the heel. And if you see here, you can see this foot's coming straight forward like that. So it's going to be a bit of a twist. And we're going to have something like this for his, his foot. That's the, um, the bunion behind the toe, the, the meat and the, the lining of the foot. And we have something like this going on. Okay, so now if I take a look at this, right, I can see they're got, they have about the same, the same length, right? So we're going to see probably a bit more the other side with the gastrocnemius and the leg muscles. And so we're starting to grab something. Um, I'm really happy about my proportions. Um, again, sedentary. He's definitely got more of an upper body than a lower body. So body. So a bit of short legs. I'll, I might tighten up the legs just a bit. Pull them up a little higher, but not much. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to dress him. Uh, um, in, in this, I am dressing him in something um, oracles. Oracles seem to like robes, but I think there's more to it than that. I mean, he no longer needs to um, don himself in regalia. He doesn't have to... Uh, put on specific robes that necessarily indicate his station because he is no longer running the, the, the school. So again, right? So if you notice what I'm doing is I'm building upon layers upon layers. It gives me the opportunity to tweak and correct and change some things that I want to as well as um, I, I always have the, the best um, um, composition um, and work at that level and then I can always just lighten it up and use that as my roadmap to take me to the, my next my next point right so I mean that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to just turn off all my other pieces now right so now I'm on on that level we can start seeing what's going on we can see that this is like a five foot six five foot eight individual they don't look very tall um, you can see that right now that foot looks broken or to me that foot looks broken so that's something I want to play on I probably want to play upon it being more like that right that seems to work more that he's and it's more that foot drag as he's walking along um, not so uh, not so lit a little labored in his walk just a little right so I, I can now take it uh, to the next step I'm still not going to do his face um, it could be worth doing but right now I want to think about his clothes I think he would he would try to keep himself warm, so that would probably be a vest. So the vest would play upon the shirt he's going to be wearing underneath. Uh, if I'm thinking Oracle, I'm thinking um, well put together. So I'm going to actually um, give him a cuffed, very um, very bellowous shirt, right? So so just for now, just getting in some of some of my forms and lines of action. Um, this here. Uh, this is about a little bit about playing on intuition, playing upon what, what is wanted, but it's also playing upon um, studying drapery, seeing how drapery, like literally going and seeing someone with a, with a, a, a large bellowy shirt, how, how it would get affected by a vest, how it get pulled upon, how, how uh, the arm, the upper arm, the lower arm would, would influence what's going on 
with all this, right? Do we give him see something simple as as a as a cufflink um, to to uh, uh, bind his cuffs? Um, are we doing that? Is he is he doing something a little bit more meticulous with with maybe straps, right? So this is something to think about. I, I do like the idea of this being a meticulous character, but he's a, is he a well-to-do meticulous character that can just be equally as meticulous with his with his cufflinks, right? So I'm gonna take this around here. So I'm contouring around the the, the chest, the rib cage, uh, the pectorals and such, just to give a nice vest, right? So there's the nice vest. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just playing upon that right now, getting a good idea of what that vest will be, how that vest is sitting, right? So the vest comes down to there, it's probably going to come down to here, okay? Um, the vest probably holding back, maybe holding back with something simple like a, a simple, um, again, maybe this is a better opportunity to play upon um, a meticulous quality that, uh, that this character has. Uh, where where the uh, the lacing is, right? How the lacing works? Will the lacing just work that way, where it's this one lace that goes through, that comes down to the bottom, and maybe just has has a knot tie at the end, right? That can be undone once once he's ready to, or maybe it has another type of concept like a cuff link, that that uh, that locks the lace in place, so keeps keeps the vest um, taut to the body. Uh, the the I would like the idea that the shirt um, would would um, would also open. Um, would it lace the same way? Would there would they be together? Is he a type of person that would um, have have a, um, a tailor or some kind of a seamstress that would actually um, um, would actually um, ask for a vest and this nice shirt that's all one so that everything can can easily work together so that can also be something that might be worth exploring and that's something that I can definitely look into as I start to develop what kind of character this uh, this Oracle is right this X Oracle uh, it's on the bottom part, so that would be down here somewhere, the, the links for the shirt. Okay. Um, pants, skirts, definitely going to be pants. I think this is a great place for maybe a nice uh, sash binding. We're looking above, right? Our eye level is probably going to be up here somewhere at his eye level for this. So I can go in and I can just put in some sash bindings here, play on those sashes, and they probably... Uh, wrap up like uh, much like a tie would um, from a suit so bunch a little at the bottom and just play down and we'd have the two right so we can play on upon that and that's what's holding up the pants and then we have the pants are we gonna have tight pants that's gonna probably also rely upon the fashion of of uh, of the, the, the city or the or the uh, the culture that he's that he's in um, so, uh, whether we can have tight pants, whether this shirt actually bellows out into some form of tunic, right? So remember shirts being pulled, so it's probably going to get tucked and, um, pulled a little on there, right? As, as we have, um, the shifts happening. And, um, so then from here we can have them in probably a type of wool, maybe a cotton, um, fairly close fitting but nothing like tights where we'd be dealing with spandex right and then we can decide if he's wearing boots or not i'm thinking he's not wearing boots i'm thinking if anything he's gonna have his pants uh they're gonna come to a certain level they're gonna drape forward and and i, I like the idea that maybe they're they're um meticulously cuffed as opposed to just rolled up right so we, we've got a nice little uh, cuffing going on here for the pants and when we come to the when we come to the um, the, the the footwear I'm, I'm thinking uh, he's not an adventurer he's not going to be wearing boots concerning themselves with uh, water and mud and such so uh, he's probably going to be wearing some form of slipper 
It could be a sandal. I'm thinking a slipper would definitely be um, a lot uh, more um, apropos and it would be open enough so it's easy enough to put on and off, right? There's going to be a crease and there's going to be a pull up at the end, right? And so there we have the slipper. Now, do we want that slipper to have a, um, a strong cobbling? Is there going to be a heel on that slipper? Or is it going to be your standard, you know, one mono level healed uh, piece of footwear, right? How, how is it going to be designed? What's going to be? So for now, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to play upon different options and explorations. Um, older, he might be wearing some sort of um, stocking socks or something. And then, of course, we come over to the other leg and we do the same thing. So there's going to be a bit of a draping on this way. The pants are going to pull this way and then drape out around there, right? And we can see from heel to, to cuff, heel to cuff, we got the pants doing something like this. And they are dropping forward, right? So we can do that. And we can do that. There we are. And we can have show the bunching happening from the um, from the bands, right? And there's a foot coming out. There's where the heel is. The heel, heel, and then slipper right slipper space and toe and toe there we go and really quick you're getting a really good understanding let's make this a little bigger here so we can see it this is like the cap for the scroll case uh, playing upon this material it's starting to drop down and starting to get pulled over and then it's going to return quickly and get pulled up there like that. So a little bit of a change in that trajectory. Uh, for now, I might just keep it as as a uh, rope, and we'll see if 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 he's as well to do and and he's um, he respects the importance of of presentation and wealth and quality. Uh, maybe then there would be like some kind of. Um, I don't know, a lanyard or some sort of emblem that, that would be part of that, that scroll case, right? And then we can go in and if we are playing on wealth, does he have like, you know, designs and what kind of designs? This looks a little bit like more, I don't know, like fire or something. So we'd probably want to look into that, whether we'd even go something as simple as paisley, right? And just get those paisley um, teardrop shape um, designs in there, get that hand in. So that hand is just basically holding his belt at place, holding his, his stomach, whatever. Um, and you can see how where we're getting to. And we can think about headdress if he'd wear a headdress. I think he would. Um, <clears throat> I think he'd probably just wear like a simple uh, cap um, that would keep his head warm. So I'd probably pull it back a little, <clears throat> have its band, and then have its excess part of its cap kind of pulling wider. And wrapping around kind of looking a bit like a, a chef or an artist um, keeping his hair out of the way and maybe his hair is being actually pulled back uh, maybe he's bald we'll still look into that decide what we want to do if we want to go that way uh, looking always curious right so a good way to kind of play upon that is just having him look in a different direction cocking his eye and observing what's going on and then playing upon them nose I want to go a bit bigger with his nose imagining that he would be um, older so ears and nose bigger from cartilage continuously growing um, I don't know if if I want to um, give him facial hair um, that's gonna play upon what he thinks about aesthetics and and how meticulous he is. So if he does have facial hair, it will be uh, fairly fashioned, well fashioned facial hair, right? So um, yeah, so that's that'd be the play on that. Um, that hat's very unassuming, um, considering he no longer has the role that he once had. That probably be okay. He's looking like he's more in his late thirties, early forties at the moment. So that's something else that I need to. Um, work on uh, making sure that I uh, 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 
modifying correct and um, play on. I think maybe uh, having him with a receding hairline would help. Having him with a, a nice uh, grayish beard, well-groomed, could also be nice and can really play on some nice feelings and dynamics. So there's some interesting things going on with the style and fashion. And of course, we would have to consider that, take a look at some, some samples online to see how that cements. Uh, for now, that's enough to go on to get a certain feel. Um, my only problems are um, he's not looking um, important, right? So not. So that's something that I might want to address in, in my next video as we continue on and we start building up our characters that's then going to take us into our story oops not that hmm. there it is just a second let me just check my stuff there we go to do this okay 